Circle Bank, who, uh, who will be making a presentation later on as well. He's from the Innovation Club in, uh, used to be called East Anglia in the UK. Um, we have a pretty good schedule, program tight, and we will keep on uh, going right away. So I will get Martin to, uh, to take the floor and make his presentation um, on the next uh, subject. Okay, thanks, uh, Peter. Um, as I say, the night is young, so um, I shall press straight on. Uh, my presentation really is about um, highlighting the e club fellowship that uh, has been going for several years now, and I'm the chairman of that at the moment. And uh, I have to say that, um, uh, as you'll see, one of the um, one of the situations that. Uh, we are revamping it, so I, I took the opportunity to be able to talk to you about uh, about what we're doing. Um, it's a fellowship for all people interested in um, sharing e-club ideas, connections and collaborations. And I think the ideas, connections and collaborations is something that is a theme throughout all e-clubs, really, as um, I believe that it is about connected and collaborating. So, um, so with that in mind, as a fellowship, we have actually been facing some challenges over the last 18 months and um, we've not really offered members anything of note uh, other than just sharing a little bit on Facebook. We've got a plan to revitalise that um, fellowship now for the benefit of the members. And I just thought I'd uh, just briefly for two or three minutes go through what, um, what we're planning to do. Um, we plan to restructure it uh, of what we do and how we do it so that it can be the, the go-to place for anything to do with ECOP. So it can be a repository for information, it can be sharing ideas, it can be collaborating with each other through different methods, making suggestions uh, like the one that came up a few moments ago, it can be a platform for doing all of those things. Now, in order to do that, we've got to rebuild the website, and that's been part of the problem because we've not had access to the website for nearly a year. I've now got access to that, and we're rebuilding that website, so you'll see some changes um, in the near future. Uh, we've got about 1,500 people on Facebook uh, on the Facebook page for REF, the Rotary E-Club Fellowship. And um, I don't know how how many of those um, are still active, so that's something we've got to sort, sort through. Uh, but we want to retain and rebuild our sort of membership of the uh, REF, of the Fellowship. And um, it, in the past, it has been slightly difficult to join it. You've had to go to one place and register, and then move in, and um, and you can you can't get on the, the, the Facebook page until uh, until you've registered on the website. We're going to streamline all of that so that we can make sure that people can join easily and connect with each other easily. And it may be that that would be the repository for where a database actually occurs, um, as was questioned a bit ago. But we can talk about that a bit later. Um, we need. To create a new board because although we have a board the members of the board in truth have been um, uh, obvious by their absence and, um, uh, and I think we really need to sort of restructure on that so you'll see my email at the end of uh, this presentation and anyone who actually has got an interest in the Rotary E-Club Fellowship and participating in it. If you can drop me an email and let me know, um, give me a little bit of your background, uh, which club you're in and so on, then I can collect all of that together. That would be really, really good start. Um, and then we can look at the terms of reference for the board as well. Um, we're streamlining, as I say, the places to engage in. And um, uh, it's this platform really for sharing best practices and ideas. We're building on that bit by bit, but there are loads of different e-clubs all over the world and half of them don't know each other. I mean, the regulars, like uh, some of ourselves online today, uh, do because we pop into each other's clubs. But that would be great if we could actually find one place, the, the, the go-to place for things to do with Rotary. Also, maybe we could become a voice in RI and in the UK RIBI for e-club matters. Um, okay. So we could operate the community hub really for the development of any e-rotary um, ideas. I mean, I believe that e-rotary can be adopted by any club anywhere in the world. And uh, it's not just a preserve of e-clubs, but um, we can guide traditional clubs to actually engage much, much better in what they do um, by embracing online um, online methodologies. Uh, 
And as I say, have a knowledge base for sort of the new technologies, keep abreast of technologies and new innovations uh, that improve the effectiveness of Rotary. Um, there's an awful lot of new technology emerging. The immersive technology is actually something that's um, uh, that's quite interesting um, to, to see what developments can be made there. Um, so in essence, we could stand in summary, we can stand for being a beacon for effective e-club network and the e-rotary platform. Okay. If you'd like to take a note of my, I'll put it on the chat line as well for everybody, but um, uh, martin at rotaryclub.org.uk is my email address. So anybody who's interested, or if you've just got a question about uh, the Rotary Fellowship, some of you may be familiar with it, some of you may not, but uh, feel free to just drop me a note and I'll, um, I'll get back to you um, when, uh, uh, when, when you've asked the question. Okay, so um, I'll stop it at that point and um that's really just a summary for uh, a plug for the rotary e-club fellowship to try and streamline um a, a, a vehicle for rotary e-clubs around the world okay thanks very much martin appreciate that very much and um for those of you that have come later could you change your name to reflect the club you're from it would be nice if, uh, because that will make it easier for us to see who you are. Next, we will, uh, I will take, give the floor to Brian, Brian uh, Carmichael, and uh, he will talk about uh, some statistics, but I promise you it's not going to be boring. <laughs> no, no, you sort of set me up there, haven't you, Peter? So it won't of be course. boring. <laughs> uh, most of you are, uh, I'm just going to share a screen with you here. That's, that's up there, is it now, Peter? Okay, most of you are prob probably familiar with the retention statistics that Rotary International generates for the districts. And as all of our e-clubs are part of a district, this information gets mixed up with all the Terra clubs in any one district. But for those of you who have not seen this report before, I'll just go over this, this one quickly and, and how, it, uh, how it sort of works out. Rotary refers to existing members and new members and they track these members. And as you can see on the screen there in the top, uh, near the left, it says the number of members in your club is July 1st, 2015. That's when Rotary draws a line in the sand. And on that date, in this case, Lulu Island had 27 members and uh, the Sony e Club had nine members. Over the next three years, between then and June 2018, all those are called existing members, those 27 and nine members. Rotary tracks whether they stay with Rotary, stay with that club, or if they leave and get readmitted to another club, they track that. So it gives you the retention percentage of your existing members. And in the case of the Sony E Club, they had nine members, four of them were terminated, so they had a retention percentage of 55%. Now, any member that joins after July 1st, 2015 is considered a new member. Even if they joined two days ago, they still fall under the category of new members. And this is, and Rotary tracks those members. So again, in the in case of the Sony E-Club, there were 16 members had been admitted since July of 2015. 12 of them had left, and Darren can explain that the, most of those people went over to a brand new E-Club. That, so that's why they lost as many members as they did. So, and then it leaves you with a retention percentage of your new members. And this is important because Rotary International is very aware of the fact that within the first three years is our biggest challenge in, in developing that uh, loyalty or in involvement and enthusiasm for Rotary. So that's why they break it down into these two statistics. So what Rotary International has done for us, they've created this chart for just the North American e-clubs. So after subsequent to this meeting, we will send out to all the North American clubs this chart so that you'll be able to see exactly how you how your club is doing specifically and I'll share one other bit of information with you uh, and just at the same time this is not exactly uh, well maybe I don't have it up here. yes there it is in my role as assistant rotary coordinator, I have access to this same information for those districts in, in the area of which I'm in, which is the eastern part of Canada and the a couple of upstate uh, New York and, and Maine. Uh, 
so I was able to generate their retention statistics for the same new members, existing members, and and the new members. So as you can see, the total e-club percentages show up as 51.3% retention of existing members and 55.6% retention of the new members. Just sort of caution everybody, and that this will come out with the email, there are a lot of e-clubs that have since terminated. And so that statistic greatly, greatly affects the overall average that we see at the bottom. So when you get this chart, your individual chart, you will actually be able to see exactly how your club is doing and holding on to existing members and, uh, and those new members that come into your clubs. So that's basically very quickly what that report is that you'll all be getting a copy. And if you've got any specific questions, I'd encourage you to use the chat window and you can send me a chat when we do the breakout sessions. If there are any questions that come up at that time, I can get answers back to you uh, after we come back out of the breakout sessions. Should I just roll right into the satisfaction survey, Peter? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So the next thing that we did, and this e-club meeting sort of sprung out of the fact that we, here in North America, we have what we call passport clubs at this particular time. And there are about 14 passport clubs in North America and 16 in the world, I believe. And in the same interest, the passport clubs wanted to get together and to have a general discussion around their particular format of, of rotary. So when we started to talk as a, as a group of passport clubs, we reviewed the Rotary International Membership Satisfaction Survey, and we felt that there were a number of questions in there that obviously did not apply to passport clubs, and we struck a committee of passport club members that wanted to get together, revise the membership survey so that it would be more applicable to a passport club. So in the same vein, I'm offering to coordinate for the e-clubs of North America, an opportunity to get together and let's design a membership satisfaction survey form that we can send out to e-clubs in North America. And if you're, we had the three or four people from the passport clubs that are working on this committee with me. So if there are people that are around the table tonight who would like to be a part of this particular endeavor to create a satisfaction survey that would be specific to e-clubs, use the chat window or Get, get back in touch with Peter or myself and let us know and we will gladly get together online or offline and, uh, and develop a passport club or a, an e-club survey, satisfaction membership satisfaction survey. All and right. Again, use the chat window if you've got anything, we can review that and get back with some further answers if we didn't cover, if I didn't cover it properly after we break out into the sessions. Good. You want to open it up for some questions or discussion right now, or shall we move right into the uh, um, into the um, into the breakout rooms? The breakout well, rooms, and yeah. then have discussions later. Yeah, I think I think that was the idea behind this. So, I yes. in the background, we've gone and set up the the breakout rooms. Uh, I've, I've preset them up based on the number of people that were here about shortly after eight o'clock. So I am just going to go to the breakout room. Some of you might remain here in this room. We will either assign you to another, uh, assign you to a breakout room, or if there are enough people still remaining in this room, we'll have our own session right here. Yeah, the main room will remain active because that way it will not interrupt the video. Because when we do a breakout session, the uh, um, the recording does not happen in the breakout sessions. So, so that's, uh, that's fine. Go ahead, Brian, uh, throw us away. I, actually, if you could just take about two minutes and entertain them, Peter, there's a couple of people. I can't I entertain do. people. Any questions? <laughs> Any other questions? I have one. I really Self left here in the main room. Uh, we will have the same discussion that they will in the breakout rooms. And the topic that we're suggesting that you uh, discuss is what is the single biggest challenge e-cubs face today. So you'll find yourself in a room with a number of other people. It, we've got five to seven minutes that you can sit there and have a discussion. There will be a little window that pops up telling you that there's one minute left. After we come back after the break, we will go to the five rooms and get a summary from each of those rooms as to what was being discussed and what they felt was the biggest challenge. So uh, I'm going to open all the rooms at this point and uh, good luck with your discussion and we'll see you back in the big room in about seven minutes time.
So this is Rhonda. I joined late. I'm Rotary E Club of District 7710. And um, I guess I'm in the main room, you were saying. You weren't able. That's right, which is okay. which is fine. So we can have our own discussion because the, what actually happens is the recording doesn't record what goes on in the breakout room. So okay. the four of us that are left here, we can have our discussion around the same question, which is what is we what do we think are the biggest challenges that we're facing today? So just give me a second to make sure that everybody seems to be assigned to a room, which I think they are. I don't see any. Everybody's got a green dot beside their name. So, so here we are. So we've got the, the, the three of us. I used to be in an e-club uh, in district. That I was with the Sony e-club, which is Southern Ontario, Western New York. I just recently joined a passport club in district 7080. So that's who I am. Uh, and you are, again, e-club of 70, 7710. Your, your name again was? Rhonda Pierce. Rhonda. Okay. Yes. I'm just going to update your uh, update your name there if we if we could as as far as that goes. Uh, so we've heard who you who you are, Andy. Who which club are you with? No volume there, Andy. Andy, you may be on mute. How, okay, we'll go over to Benjamin. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Are you still in your car? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm parked and uh, I got stranded in the traffic, so I just pulled on the roadside and I'm st sitting right in my car. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so what do we figure, the, Rhonda, what do you figure the biggest challenge is for Rotary Club, or e clubs these days? Um, for us right now, is to have members that are um, engaged, I guess. We have a we had about 18 and 19 members of which on a regular basis, we can have 10 to 12 totally engaged, but the others it's off and on. And we, we give the variance for, you know, maybe two or three, but there's always this four out there. And we find that we'll have transfers that come in and they may, I, I see it as we're a holding place for them until they maybe they're going to leave Rotary. Um, some of the transfers, it, their intentions are good. They want to, you know, maybe their schedules have changed or what have you, maybe the cost, you know, but once they get there, they're not sticking and staying, you know, um, or they're not engaged as much as you would think, especially being a transfer, you would think that their um, experience in Rotary tells them they should be engaged you know right and we're not seeing that so um it's it's a nuance that we're working through we're we're talking about it you know we're aware of it um we just haven't overcome it <laughs> benjamin how about your how about yourself what do you see as being a big challenge yeah uh, what, what i see as a uh, one of the major challenges is actually the engagement aspect of it being um being on the net, not having that physical connection, it makes members kind of a little bit reluctant to respond to communication. And the fact that it's kind of difficult to physically meet, in most cases to undertake projects, it kind of uh, bring weakness in the minds of members and say, well, I'm part of the club, but I don't feel like I'm actually doing something physically. So what we even thought of doing was that even though you might be part of the e-club, but if you can also associate yourself with a local club in your area, because for example, I'm part of the e-club of District 7255, which is based actually in New York, but I live in San Diego. And mm -hmm. yeah, so when we call for meetings, yes, I will be online for meetings, but in terms of us having that general collection of people from the various locations at once, sometimes it, seems to, it, it tends to be very difficult. So we try to encourage our members, the few members that we have that, you know, to also have that Rotary Fellowship experience in person, if possible, try to visit a local club that, you know, you, you can get that sense of uh, what it is like when you are there in person, 
rather than only doing it on the internet, which to some extent weakens some people. So that is actually our major challenge. And also the next one comes in with that, it makes members reluctant to make payments of their dues because to some extent they feel that, hey, I, I want to make a payment of my dues, but I also want to see how much am I contributing physically in terms of what I'm making the payment for. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, sort of, you pay the money and are they get, do they feel they're getting the value for their money, sort of? Exactly. Like. All right, that's it. Yeah. Andy, are you able to, you're, you're able to hear us, I presume, you can nod your head and you can see. I, I think we sort of lost Andy. He so doesn't seem to have audio. I can I can reach out to him. Um, his audio. I can see him like maybe he's talking, but we're not hearing him. Yeah, we got chat. Renewed. When I look at him, everyone else has a speaker. He doesn't. Maybe he called in, but right. you seem to be on mute, Andy. I don't know. Is Andy, nod your head if you can hear us. Brian, is there a way that a host can unmute him, probably? Yeah, but he doesn't have a speaker. So have identified that engagement seems to be a challenge. And what it'll be interesting to hear back from the other rooms as to what was going on. Because what we just leading up to, we'll get the report back from all of them. It's recorded, so I, we don't have to make detailed minutes at this point. But presuming that there will be future meetings, and that's part of the poll that will be done later on, we can then identify maybe engagement as being a topic, and we can then get together and break out rooms, and we'll all talk about engagement and the way that various clubs handle that particular challenge and get some reports back. So, and Brian, I, did you say that you currently are in an e-club, or you used to be in an e-club? I used to be. I, I, I've just joined a passport club. It's, it's a long story. Okay, no worries. <laughs> I'm, I'm, because you can be a member of two Rotary Clubs at this particular point, I'm actually an associate member still with the Rotary at Sony E-Club, which is Southern Ontario, Western New York. Gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha. So I, I sort of wear a hat and a half. So when you were talking about surveys, I did do our survey in Google Docs. So we have our membership survey. I just took it from the, um, what is it, the RI? Right. Know, documentation and i uh, i'm just gonna Andy, just, are you there just just bear with me i have to go in and do some housekeeping i've got to go and let everybody know that we're going to end the bake bake out okay. breakout room so just uh sure. just bear with me here Looks up. like andy's trying to come on now there everybody will be back in 59 seconds okay. i'm so sorry right. so, so it's brian and then wait i can't even Rhonda, see rotary e club Rhonda um, and then Benji. Seventeen. And what is it? Sorry. Benjamin. 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 Okay, awesome. In uh, New York District. 17. I love that you're in your car. That's awesome. <laughs> right. I, I he's in New York as well. I think. Oh. Or he's part of the New York E Club. I don't. He's in San Diego. He said. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Actually, actually, to give you a full uh, update on myself, I'm from oh. Liberia. I live. Oh, wow. in, I live in San Diego. But I am a member of the E Club in New York. <laughs> oh, nice! Isn't that cool? That's right. All global. <laughs> Definitely. Love it. So as we wait for people to come back, which they should all be gradually filter back in over the next 10, 15 seconds, and then Peter, I think we're sort of on time. Eight thirty-two. I had to. We finished the breakout sessions at eight thirty-two, and about five rooms and three minutes apiece. We should be able to. Uh, should be able to get get some uh, get some information back from the various rooms. So let's just do do them in yes. order. Breakout room number one. What was? You what look, the, oh, okay. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. No, everybody's there. So go ahead. Okay. In in breakout room number one, Brent, Carol, or Peter, chair. what was the biggest challenge? You took my chair. <laughs> okay, mute everybody, um, and uh, and we'll just uh, who who are you going to ask for the question? The, uh, is it just somebody from breakout room number one, which was Jim and Mar Mar Marlo and uh, and Don? Oak person, raise your hand. Yeah, okay, who's who? 
Who's the who would, who would like to start then with the, what, what the challenge was? Jim, the Jim are you taking notes? Don? Jim and I both had issues with, uh, oh gosh, my brain's fried. Um, trying to get people to dis to Jim, my brain's fried. Are you there? <laughs> we can hear you, Don. Um, I know my club has had issues with just defining how we're going to work as a an e club because we started in one format and kind of morphed into another. Um, I know time zones and trying to find a way for people widely scattered to be able to talk to each other has been an issue for Jim. And then, Marla, I guess, I think I saw you. You want to speak for yours? Because yours was a little different. Sure. Ours was more engagement. So we, we utilize Facebook and Zoom as well as um, once a month in-person meetings. We're kind of hybrid because all of our members are local. Um, and so trying to get people to participate as much online as they do when we meet in person. Perfect. And we've got a recording of this. And I think the idea behind this is, is to get a lot of this feedback. And then we have a poll later on. And it, it, presuming that everybody's in favor of doing these meetings again, we can then identify a, a more specific topic that we can dig a little bit deeper into as, as a group. So it's really sort of identifying some topics at this point. So breakout room number two, which was Brent, Carol, and Peter, what uh, what seemed to be the consensus of the challenge for, you, for your group? Um, this is Carol. I, I somehow got anointed to do this. So... Um, <laughs> Um, it seemed that, again, similar to the first group, one of the uh, issues I think we're all facing is the, the issue of participation and ensuring that club members are feeling a part of it and participation. Clearly, I think uh, it's in, in, in my group in particular, one of the issues that has come up is mentoring the younger members so that they can, while they may be extremely technologically proficient, you know, understanding the role and responsibility as a Rotarian. Um, I really liked what I heard about the project of a, of a storybook project that allowed the members in diverse areas to participate in it and still be a part of it. And then another thing that came up I thought was very interesting is, and I'm going to actually try this, was a, uh, uh, through Zoom, a half hour coffee every once a week where everybody who's around and the topic doesn't have to necessarily be a Rotarian topic, but just something that brings people together. But I think it's very similar. You know, how do you bring people together? Um, mm -hmm. how do they still have that sense of what we heard earlier, of the collaboration and the communication. Thanks, Carol. And then go to room three, which is Darren and the North E Club of North Texas and Robin. What who is speaking for you, and what did you figure your biggest challenge was? Hi, uh, this is Darren. Um, <clears throat> biggest challenge is again same 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 message of uh, engagement, keeping all of our members engaged. Um, but separate from that, secondly was um, marketing, uh, marketing through our E Clubs. We have a lot of members that. Uh, do have are engaged outside of the e club in their own time, but you know don't send photos or any type of material to uh, the e club to to send out the message to to people. So content basically marketing content um, for an e club is a challenge to to keep on generating content. Thanks, Darren. And in room four, we had Alicia, Jason, and Karen. And what uh, what was identified in your room? Well, I, I can uh, speak for one thing, and uh, it was what others have mentioned, and that is the challenge of keeping the members engaged uh, in the club. Can't uh, hear you. Can't really hear you, Will. No, I, I said, uh, yeah, as, as, better. As, is that better? As, yeah. as others yeah. have said, the challenge of keeping members engaged in the club, in, in activities, and uh, participating in those meetings as well. I guess we average between 30 and 50 percent of uh, of the total number of members on our teleconferences, uh, even though others are engaged uh, throughout any given week. Perfect. Thanks very much, Will. Is there anybody want to add to uh, what Will was saying, or should we go into before I go into room five? Okay, in room five there go was. Ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, Brent. Brent has his head up. Oh, okay. And, uh, unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. I wanted to add 
um, perhaps we can differentiate between uh, collaboration uh, for uh, social interaction versus collaboration for projects because I find that we can easily collaborate uh, for social interaction, but it's a bit more difficult when it comes to doing a project. And uh, we, our club, E-Club of the Caribbean, ha has been quite successful with our Butterfly Storybook project because, you know, as Carol mentioned, uh, people are all over the world, but yet they could participate as judges and, and help with uh, marketing and, and sales and so forth. Um, but for projects that require, say, participation at a brick and mortar location, it's a bit more difficult because, you know, people are dispersed all over the place. So I just wanted to highlight the difference in the types of collaboration. Probably a good point, Brent. Thank you. And then from room five, we had uh, Matt and Michael, Rudy and Martin, who's in, like to sum up. Oh, what Robin's, got his, Robin's got his hand up. Yeah, what I find is that w with us, as we're so spread out geographically, that our members, we encourage them to get involved with a local district and the local clubs and participate in their projects. Um, and that's fine. And a lot of our members do, but the galling point is they don't report back or send a picture back so that we can put it in the meeting. Uh, it's real frustrating. We know a lot of our members are really active um, and we don't see them comment in our meetings, but we know they're active because of other interactions and how they report their attendance and their service hours. Um, but the participation in the meeting, we feel it's engagement, but I'm beginning to think that the E-Club is suitable for certain types of people that are comfortable doing their own thing but the E-Club gives them an umbrella to work under. And I think if we could uh, come around to that way of thinking of our, of our E-Club situations, maybe we would be better off rather than trying to hammer the square peg into the round hole all the time. Interesting observation, Robin. There were a lot of nodding heads as you were as you were as you were talking there. Um, any last minute uh, sort of thoughts or ideas that came out that anybody'd like to throw out to, into the recording? Because for for later discussion, uh, I, I wanted to. Oh. <laughs> good. I wanted to comment um, to Robin that we put out a newsletter. And it's basically just a bunch of pictures with a few words. And so we um, focus on the service projects that our members have done. And they get to see it. That's it. I was going to suggest on whatever web page we end up setting up, we can put a list of who our speakers are. Since we're all e-clubs, anybody speaking could be at any e-club. They don't have to be at the location. It's a struggle a lot of times to find a new speaker every week and we all have speakers we could share them you know? Just Martin, one, yeah. Martin go ahead yeah one of those um, points can be actually remedied by the Rotary Eco Fellowship um, we have fairly good speakers quite a lot of the time and I nearly always post um, on the Rotary e Club Fellowship, who is speaking and what time. And um, as a result of that, we actually have got a number of people, some of them here, who actually visit our club quite regularly. And um, so 50% of our club and 50% visitors, actually, more often than not. And we usually end up with, oh, Michael, what, about 20, 20, 20 to 25 people, yeah. generally? Uh, yeah, uh, Rudy? Yes, uh, Peter, uh, I know f for us the same way. We, uh, on our website, we post upcoming speakers for a month in advance. Uh, and for instance, and we get some pretty high quality speakers. We have coming up on January 8th, uh, Scott Paul, who works with Oxfam, but he is boots on the ground in Yemen. He's going to give us an update on the crisis in Yemen uh, as seen from his eyes on the ground there. And so those are the type of folks that we get to speak to our clubs. We have some pretty high level speakers yeah. every week. Uh, and, and so if we could ha find a way to help market that, 
that would uh, fill up the room. We have ability to have a hundred people online, and you know, like you, we have twenty-five. Uh, would be great. Post it, post it on ref. That would be the way to do that. I think in that respect. I mean, I agree with you, Rudy. Is that um, you can the one thing about an e-club is they can actually get prestigious speakers. In a similar vein, we actually one of our best ones was actually the president of the Rotary Club of Kabul City, which was very, very enlightening. Um, I didn't wow. even. I didn't even know they had a Rotary Club in Afghanistan, and um, to actually have a club where they talked about Rotary in a war-torn country was phenomenal. Yeah, Any other comments at, at, at this particular point? Yes, yeah. Darren made a comment. Why can't we have like a shared calendar where we could all, rather than having to go to all these different websites to get the leads, why can't we have one place where we share it? Well, well that speaks, that's, that's, speaks yeah. to you, Martin, doesn't it? Martin yep. No, Sorry. that is. We we need. We, nobody has actually worked on that that concept to get it in one place. And so, I welcome that very much. And I'm much behind that to have a location because, as e clubs, we make it so easy for the speakers because they don't even have to to leave their lazy chair. Look at me. I haven't moved from this chair yet today, but I've been around the world about twice. And so that is really why we can, we can get people from all kinds of quality speakers to join us in our e-clubs. In addition to that, I want to make another comment that there are a lot of, we have, you know, 50, 55, 50 some e-clubs in North America. And then there is another 100, 200, and 30 or so around the world, but a whole lot of them, I have no idea how they operate, how they work. They may have a Facebook connection of sorts. Uh, how often they connect, what they do, don't know. And uh, so I have all the email addresses of all these clubs and a majority of them I never hear anything from. And maybe that's not new. The other thing that I wanna throw in is that we are 300 clubs out of 35,000. However, we are clubs that can reach many more people than each and every one of those 35,000 clubs by itself, just yeah. because of our, the way that we are all there. And look at us where we are from, you know, today, for instance, too. Ryan. Can I say that the, I have another point, just to keep everything on track, was where we were going to be going. We've got a poll that we've set up here, which is going to ask us three questions and sort of sort of charts a little bit as to what we'll be doing in the future. And Jeffrey, I presume you can just nod your head at this point after we finish the poll. You're, you'd still like to take a few minutes to chat to every, chat to us. So Jeffrey is our Rotary International Director for Zone 24 and 32 here in the cross Canada and Northeastern United States. But let's just do the poll first and then we'll come back and we'll hear from, hear from Jeffrey. So yeah, we're doing really well here. It looks like just about everybody has participated at this particular point. And I have, can I share these results, Peter? Because that's the first time of I've done course. one. Of Once, just, just wait till they're finished on where you are with, uh, you know, with the, the 100% and yeah. stuff. Yeah, we've had 15 out of 21 so far. Close. I'd like, to, I'd like to make a comment. This is Rhonda, Rotary E-Club District 7710. I'm in North Carolina right now. Um, we have the engagement. We talked about it with Benjamin that um, for our group, we have members in India. We have members um, locally in our region, in our area. Um, but those of us that are local to like the city that I live in, in Durham, North Carolina, we meet. Uh, we have a social that we do and we invite other clubs to come to our social. But as I think it was Robin says, we actually do service projects with other groups. I found that we had our own signature fundraiser that we just did. And I would say it was successful in so many counts because it was the most engagement that everyone had. And I think we made the comment that this is going to be once a year and we want 100% participation. Now, of course, those that are in India could not participate, but everyone else in the area, for the most part, came and was shocking to us because we only get, you know, two or three, four or five once in a while. Um, they may be more like 10 on our calls, on our program meetings, but when we do our socials, we don't see people. And I think what Robin, he put the nail on the head where people really like the freedom 
of e-club because they like to do when and where they want to be. And so I, I really would like to see that on our agenda next time. Perfect. Okay. I did it already. Oh, thank you, Peters. <laughs> yeah, because there was not more uh, things action happening. And I think right. as co-hosts, as hosts, could, I don't know if we could actually vote. Which is fine. So that's encouraging. So 100% of us found the meeting was uh, was certainly worthwhile. Interestingly enough, we're about a 50-50 split between meeting monthly or every two months. And then, uh, and everybody's certainly interested in more collaboration. So we can take this under advisement and uh, certainly work towards the next meeting, can't we, Peter? Absolutely. We can, you know, tabulate. We'll go over that and put something together. And, you know, within by next week or something like that, we should have something for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. So. We have to include Martin, too, of course. That, that's right. So yeah. this particular point, I'm going to introduce uh, Jeffrey Cataract, who is the right. national director. If I, may, if I may interrupt here, Group Five didn't have a chance to comment on our on our on our discussion, and I nominate Martin to summarize. Okay, I have no idea why that happened. That's Brian's part. Yeah, that's that's me. I I won't be around for the next meeting. I've been summarily dismissed from the group. Go ahead, Martin. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Um, I, think from, I think from our point of view, Group 5, basically it was down to engagement and I take the points I think which have been very valid about engagement between, I think it was Brent said, between social and projects. Um, we did make the point and I made the point, there are two things, when I was in a land-based club and any of you have been in a land-based land club, how many times have you, I would say you've got the 80 to 20 rule, 20% 20 of the Rotarians in any club do the work, um, do 80% of the work. So I don't think we should beat ourselves up over um, the lack of engagement. We should be concerned about it, but I think we need to be clear that what engagement means in that respect and how it, how it represents itself. If they one, at one level, a really crude level, if they continue paying their dues, they must be engaged at some point from something with satisfaction. <laughs> Not very good from a measurement point of view. Um, and the other one, in terms of um, uh, in terms of projects, we have learned very quickly that we actually do not have a club project. Um, uh, I've taken your point on board about having a once a year project, and I might think about that. But we don't have. We moved away from a traditional. We don't. We we actually say. Um, we do not do traditional unless there's a compelling reason to do so because we're an e-club. And in that respect, um, we don't have a club project. We have projects that all members want to, uh, members themselves can get on and do. So we've got 20 or 30 projects. Some are successful, some are not. And they share those projects. So there might be two people on the project and they get on and do it. So we do away with, and the, count, the club council has no say in it, um, the only time the club councillors are saying it is if they want money from the club. Um, and we get people doing all sorts of projects. Um, we've got uh, e-books being produced. Uh, we've got uh, e-joke books being produced. We've got um, virtual, a virtual treasure hunt coming up soon and various things of that nature. So um, some are successful, some are not, but I think the, the, the message really was um, engagement is certainly one of the key issues, but don't get it down to perspective because it's, um, you know, 20% of people do 80% of the work in most clubs. Right. Thank you, Martin, for that summary. And then, Jeffrey, at this point, our Rotary International Director is uh, Sanford Zone 2432, which is all of Canada, St. Pierre, Miquelon. We have to throw that in too, don't we, Jeffrey? And then uh, the Northeast of the United States. So over to you. Uh, thank you, Brian. And uh, thank you, Peter, for uh, inviting me to this meeting. Uh, and thank each of you for what you're doing. Uh, uh, you're on the forefront of your pioneers, if you will, in a, in a newer model of engagement. Uh, let me give you a bit of an update from the board. Uh, in July, this board and our president, Barry, decided that our organization needed some very dramatic change, especially if we wanted to survive in North America, Australia, New Zealand, and RIBI over the next 30 years, because clearly we've got a problem and that problem is with membership. 
uh, we've been stagnant for the past 15 years. And, and so we knew that as a board, we had significant work we had to do. So a committee was formed of six non-board members to chair as our past president, Ian Risley. And it's called the Shaping Rotary's Future Committee. And that committee was charged by the board over the next two years with coming up with relevant change that the organization could make in governance, in events, um, in models of engagement, and to report back to the board so that we could see if there were ways that we could move this organization forward and move the needle. So, so hold that for a minute. What has become obvious is that our traditional legacy clubs, terror clubs as you call them, will not allow us to survive over the next 30 years. There is a significant portion of our population, you being part of that, but many others, especially the 150,000 people that walk out the side door. Every year we bring in about 150,000 new members. Every year we lose about 150,000 new members. I'm gonna suggest that probably a significant portion of those 150,000 that leave our terror clubs probably don't know you exist and would be in and would welcome to know, would, would, would love to know about you because they would fit in with you whereas they didn't fit in with a I think part of the problem and especially in North America is that we sell people a Mercedes Benz and then we put them into the back seat of a 1940 Chevy with the door open on the other side and wonder why they leave. The fact is that people are looking for new models of engagement and we need to identify those and you are one of those. And there are others. Brian mentioned passport clubs. Uh, and we're now looking at other models of engagement that do not allow or do not force people to be part of a legacy club, part of a, a traditional rotary club, if you will. To me, that's the only way that we're going to grow rotary over the next 20 to 30 years. And we do need to grow rotary. And it's going to be with these new models of engagement that don't involve a legacy club, which will always be a part of us. There will always be people who want and need a legacy club. It's not what is gonna make us successful in the next 50 years. So I congratulate you and applaud you and appreciate you for what you're doing with this model of engagement. One of the committees that I'm on on the board oversees all of Rotary fellowships and all of the Rotarian action groups. And one of the things that I've asked that committee to do, to, because to me, I've been a Rotarian for 41 years. And, and to me, Rotary fellowships and Rotarian action groups, they're out by Pluto somewhere orbiting around the sun and nobody knows about them except the people who are involved with them. I think, my belief is, that Rot Rotary fellowships and Rotarian action groups could be tremendous ways for folks e-clubs to engage around those groups uh, and so we're exploring ways that maybe that could happen and ways that we can bring fellowships and Rotarian action groups in from that orbit around Pluto and bring them closer into Earth. I, I really liked hearing about the fellowship that you're planning around e-clubs uh, and that would come before the committee that I'm on for endorsement and I would vote yes for you. Um, no, it's, sorry, it exists. It is actually a, it is actually a fellowship. Um, I missed all of that. Whoever was talking, go ahead and we, say it. it the, the Rotary e Club Fellowship exists as a fellowship already. Okay. The Rotary e Club Fellowship. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, Cliff Docterman, one of our past presidents, once said, and it was mostly about our legacy clubs, don't worry about the people who pay dues and don't do anything. They allow the rest of us to do what we need to do. <laughs> so Sounds like you're right on. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're an e-club, passport club. I mean, some of those people who pay dues and don't do anything allow the rest of us to do what we have to do. And uh, so let's just uh, not be too hard on them. So I guess what I would say to you is if there's anything that I can do from the board level to support you or to support um, things that would help you, then you just need to let me know. Because I, I believe in e-clubs. I think that you're a model for the future. I believe that you are part of the way that we are going to grow Rotary over the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, and 
I liked what I heard about the challenges of engagement. And Brian, I think you captured the other ones. Um, and, and those would be great discussion points for you going forward. I'll stop there and ask if there are any questions. Anybody, any questions for Jeffrey? Uh, yes, Rudy. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, one of the things that I think uh, is a, a challenge, maybe an opportunity for us, uh, is to figure out how we get our districts to connect with the rest of our clubs in our districts to say, okay, if you've got members that are getting ready to leave your club, uh, your land-based club, uh, because they are reassigned in a job, They're, something's happened in their life, they can't attend anymore for a breakfast, lunch, or dinner club, but they, they would be eligible and available to jump on to an e-club. How do we get that message out to, those, to our districts and our clubs in our districts that, that we, could, we could keep these members in Rotary right. and capture them? Uh, Rudy, Go ahead, Jeffrey. Yeah. Rudy, I, I like the question and I wrote it down and I'm going to bring it to our board meeting in January in San Diego because I think that uh, whether it's Rick Kick who heads up our IT team or Brian King who heads up, heads up membership, uh, there, there's got to be a way that we can do that. And so we need to figure that out because I do think that a lot of those people who walk out the door. 90% of our members leave within the first two years. They do that because they were not engaged. They do that because they, they lost their job or they moved their job or they did whatever. I don't think all of them would be well suited for an e-club, but I think a lot of them would. And, and, and we should find a way to connect them with you. I wrote it down. I have, I have something to say about that. One, excuse me. One more question. Martin. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested, Jeffrey, in um, uh, what your views are regarding becoming non-districted as an e-club. Um, add some color to that for me. Becoming non-districted as an e-club. At the moment, an e-club, but it's root, the, 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 the legacy model of RI is that it has to have a, um, a location, um, so a geographic location, and by definition, that geographic location then attributes the district. So you then attribute it to that district. So, for instance, we have members all over the world, um, from Nepal to Alaska and um, California, and um, we're in uh, in sunny old England, and we're in the uh, District 1080. Um, why would I need to be in District 1080? I don't really have any reason to be in District 1080 as a club, which can be non-districted. Um, it's a good point. I, we are exploring right now a new model of membership. And, and, and I have to be careful about this because we have, it's, it's not, it's against our constitution right now. We have to pilot it first, but it would be called, it's, it, it would. Are you breaking up? Gone now. Gone. And Martin, I want to say too that that's a really good question. And before Jeff question. comes on, um, Jeff, that's one thing that has come up. That's in terms one of the of models. Sorry. Just a minute. Just a minute, everybody. Jeffrey, can you try and talk again, or it looks like you had a stroke. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, you broke up. Could you respond again to Martin's question? This point. No. No, unfortunately. The connection is not very good. Okay, uh, Rhonda, you had a question? Yeah, I was just commenting on the fact that we worked with our membership district chair to actually ask that question that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you, um, Rudy, uh, I forget now who asked the question, but how can we get those that are leaving? And the membership district chair says if they come through them, because we've been strategizing together, that she will bring them to us. And so um, it's, it's, it's slowly working out that at least they're giving us a look, you know, um, but we are as a club going through our district and meeting with those club members, uh, other clubs that are interested in what is e-club, an introduction. So as we're doing that, we're feeling that we'll capture, that, that'll help with the retention, 
So, yeah, and that's why I think districting for us is is helpful because now they're looking at us as district wide and not just as focused on our little region or little area that we're in. Ten of our ten of our members actually came from a retention program. I was the district. Uh, membership chairman so I agree entirely with you Rhonda um, I used to ring up every member who was leaving I got a I got a notification from the database as to who was leaving and I used to ring them up and say are you leaving Rotary um, for any personal reasons what are, what are your reasons for leaving and if in fact we could overcome those problems would you remain in Rotary right. and, and that's what she's doing for us now we've just had this in the last month we've discussed this yeah but it's so e-clubs have been around for over 15 years and finally now that also Rotary said e-clubs are Rotary clubs people are starting to uh, uh, accept that and there are still many of the one point million uh, Rotarians around the world haven't even heard of an e-club yet and again the districts are the ones that could push them in that direction. To finalize, we, we just had uh, a past district governor with 32 years of perfect attendance join our club because they sold their house, they're going to be traveling around the world, and they're going to be in an area where there isn't going to be an e-club. And guess what? She's on the board coming up. So, you know, that's the kind of people that you want to keep and use and continue to work with. I like to uh, thank each and every one of you and specifically Jeffrey for uh, attending and joining us uh, for this initial meeting and I think we have a lot of good rapport and responses and you will hear more from us we will get this uh, recorded or um, uploaded and then put things together all the texting the chat will be uh, we will have also and I will include all that in an email to all the all the Northeast club or sorry the North American clubs here so again thank you very much and I hope to see you all in a future meeting oh,